Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the live inquiry where the leaders of different political organizations, all the people who are kept in B section or in isolation cells, have promised that they were going to work on the live inquiry for six months. Six months it became a 13 and a half years mm -hmm. using the primitive tools like hand picks, shovels, and spades to dig the quarry. Mm. If you were classified as a black or as an African, you had to dress in khaki shorts, khaki shirts, and tie yourselves on your feet. The windows of Robin Island are extremely very cold. The same applies as the some of the islands very hot, working eight hours, five days a week. The lime that they dug here was used for binding the roads of Robin Island and also to whitewash some of the buildings in the village. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the likes of the late Mr. Mandela, the late Governor Mbeki, the late Walter Sisulu, the man who recruited so, Mandela to join the get ANC, get the late Ahmed Kisraga, Meg Miraj, the late Clarence McQuaid, and also the late Eddie Daniels. There were about 30 to 34 of them. They are followers who are working on the stone quarry, which is on the northern side of the island, known as the Matimba Quarry. When the political prisoners came to Robin Island, they found that cave already there. It is said that it was first dug up by the slaves and the convicts who were brought by Jan van Arribic from the mainland. <coughs> so their political prisoners use it for various purposes. Firstly, to relieve themselves as a toilet. There were two buckets that were placed inside. It was practically impossible for a political prisoner to go and relieve himself elsewhere because the order of the day was shoot and shoot to kill. Should anyone leave this place to answer nature's call of privacy, that one needs to be alone. Again, they use it for classes. There were doctors, lawyers, teachers, who were also political prisoners. Those who are academic used to teach those who are illiterate. A practical example of Eddie Daniels, who came to Robin Island with a grade seven certificate. But he went out with two university degrees, the BA and the BCom. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, education on Robin Island was not a right, it was a privilege. Mm. A word is a right to destroy your studies. Even if you're going to write some exams tomorrow, that's why the political prisoners adopted the slogan, each one, each one. Political discussions took place on that case. The basics of the constitution, which governs South Africa today, were discussed down there. In other words, you are seeing the first democratic parliament of South Africa. Again, so they used to eat lunch. Just imagine you're eating your lunch, two baguettes are standing next to you. That was also the storm for their tools. Due to the international community pressure, with the help of Helen Sussman, who was the member of parliament at that time, all queries were closed in 1978. They started developing some trades like bricklaying, carpentry, welding, and so on. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the leaders that you are talking about are the leaders after they were released. You never heard them talking about their pain and suffering. You never heard them preaching racism, anger, or hatred. Instead, they opted for reconciliation. Today, we're talking about Mr. Mandela is an icon, a man who rose from the dust of the land quarry, a man who rose from the tiny cells of Robin Island, sleeping on the Sisal mat. A man was reduced down to the number. He on the island was not called Nelson Mandela by the waters. They would call him 4666 for it stand up because he knew that it was his name. 466 was his prison number. 64, the year he came to the island, but he became the first democratic president of South Africa. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank all of you for what you did in South Africa during the dark days. When our brothers and sisters fled this country, you exiled them, educated them. Then you're also pumping your money to a liberation movement. Not to forget the rainbow nation, the South Africans, black and white, about the good spirit of reconciliation. Again, ladies and gentlemen, a pile of stones on the main entrance of the quarry is part of our monument. Those stones were placed during the reunion of the political prisoners on 11th February 1995. After five years, Mandela was released, 10 months in his office as a president. They all get to get on the island for their reunion. Mm -hmm. There are about 1,200 of them on their arrival, the one straight to that corner behind this hill. Mr. Mandela had a pick and the shovel in his hands. He demonstrated <coughs> to the media how the mind the line. 
after the demonstration ceremonies mm. and speeches, he quietly broke away from the crowd unplanned, walked slowly was in the middle, picked up a stone and he placed it there. Yet a moment of silence. All other political prisoners followed his example. If you were here, it was the sad scene. Some of them were semi-blind because of this lime quarry. Mm. If you still remember, when Nelson Mandela came out from jail in 1990, his eyes were not tearing, yet when I go an eye operation, it was because of the claim, the dust of the line. Even some of the political prisoners who were working on the line inquiry are wearing spectacles today. The reason why a pile of stones is being laid there, it's because it's where the political prisoners started to dig this limestone from 1964 up to 1978. That pile of stones, ladies and gentlemen, symbolizes the triumph of the human spirit over all odds, dignity, adversity, and petty things like apartheid. Then the message from Robin Island is that it should never, ever happen again that a person be oppressed by one another, irrespective of your color, your gender, and your religion. Sorry, and your religion. Let us all join hands together and be one race, which is the human race. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Do you have questions, ladies and gentlemen, about the limestone quarry? Do you have questions? Silence means consent. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have it, could you please take out your new 100 note? You look at the back of it and then you tell me what do you see. Okay, let me use the American term 100 bill. Look at the back of it and tell me what do you see. And but please don't tell me that you'll see you see Mr. Mandela's face. Each and every South African note has got Mr. Mandela's face. Mama, don't show me the one with the buffalo. Okay, this is not the national park. This is old school, the one with the buffalo. Oh, yeah, 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 you are right. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to feel positive oh, yeah. say I'm not wow. going to keep it. I want to show people. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't. Thank you. What do you see here? What do you see in this eyes? No. I see the warriors. I see the warriors. The pile of stones. Yeah. I don't have one. Um, the pile of stones. Then it's written in small letters. Robin Island. It's part of the Hallows Castle. It's a newly printed present. It's a story to tell. Like a constant rise. The ten red notes. It's written in Brazil. Bezo, it's a village you grew up in Eastern Cape. Another 10 rand note, it's written Howick. Howick, it's a small town in that town. When he came from Oliver Town, there were a lot of roadblocks which were looking for him. Which and every roadblock he came across, he made his name until he was arrested along the railway line in Howick. The 20 rand note, it's written Soweto. Have you been in Soweto in Pilakazi Street? The very first house he occupied in Soweto, he was married to his former late wife, Mama Winnie Mandela, and then their name was Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Then the Fitzgerald oh, wow. note is wearing his traditional clothes and his traditional necklace. He used to wear that atia when he was attending the Ribonia trial. Mama Winnie Mandela used to support him by also wearing hairs until the judge shouted to her, telling her that if you dare come into my court, not wearing these clothes, I won't allow you in. You must wear normal clothes, ordinary clothes. Mm -hmm. Then this 100 grand note shows you the limestone choir. The 200 grand note shows you his bust or his statue and also the, the union building. If you, the union buildings, if you still remember, he, when he became the first democratic president, he was sworn in union buildings, okay? in Pretoria. And then you get a Samsung phone, you go to the South African Reserve Bank currency app. Yes. Download it for free. For an iPhone, go to the iPhone Play Store, download it for free at your spare time. Not now. No. Okay. 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 <laughs> you seen it?